Now, how do we minister to someone of the opposite sex? It's very important, the first thing is that we realize that this can be a trap. We minister to them is very important, but this can be a trap. If the trap can come, can come in many different ways. Uh, for someone who are young and doesn't have a girlfriend, the, you know, the, the trap can be that you, wow, you see this person as a potential to be a girlfriend. Uh, and the other trap is the other person, you might have no interest, but the other person have interest in you. She's attracted to you. That she will ask your help all the time. She like talking with you. Uh, so we have to realize that this can destroy our whole ministry and our whole life. We have to understand border. Border. There is a, a boundary. Okay, we have to understand boundary. <coughs> what does that mean? Now, when you minister to someone of the opposite sex, uh, for instance, if you have another person ministering together, then when you minister, you just listen to the person and then you respond to the feeling, you care about the person, and then you counsel and then you pray for the person. It's more, it's all very objective. It's all very, uh, in a way, not personal, in a sense that means it's not a personal relationship. Now when does it cross a boundary? When you start to think about her all the time. Yeah. Now we, we need to think about people and remember their needs. But when you think about her as a, someone you like to minister to, you enjoy ministering to her, then you are crossing the boundary already. That you like her to ask you to pray for her. And, and then a stronger relationship would be that you, you really like her to be by your side. Uh, it's whenever there is an attachment of you toward her or her toward you, that's already, you're already crossing the boundary and it's cost, it, it will bring problem. So, um, in your situation, I would suggest always two persons to counsel one opposite sex. Two persons together. At least, I mean, there are four of you. That's very good. That the four of you, counsel, uh, two of you counsel one woman together. That way, uh, if every time it's two persons, then it doesn't give a chance. And don't have a private appointment. Now, for someone like me, I don't have this luxury. Because a lot of women ask me for counseling. But I'm always conscious my life is very precious. My ministry is very precious. I don't want to be destroyed by anyone. So I always counsel in public. And I pray for people in public. Uh, in, in a situation when there will be different activities in different rooms. I always have my room open. The door is always open. So I don't give a chance for any misunderstanding. And uh, so don't let the person have any misunderstanding. At the same time, if we have to cleanse our heart. For instance, you're praying for an attractive lady. Now, I, I would suggest to you, in your case, try to avoid that. It's best you minister with a woman and let the woman lay hand. Um, in some situation when it's unavoidable, you have to be very careful yeah. to avoid having lust while you are yes. praying for her. Yes. Um, then you remember, this is going to destroy my life. And look, look at me now. It's like you build on the foundation of God, the, of Jesus Christ. That you're building on the foundation. That when you build on it, and then you have lust, you're tearing down everything. And not only you tear down everything, you're going negative. Instead of going positive, you're going negative. That God doesn't like you as a person. God doesn't like people uh, with that intention. You know, one time in the past, I had one girl in my church. I found out that another pastor was counseling 
uh, teaching her English every week. So I asked the girl, why does that pastor teach you English? And she, the pastor knows that you are in my church. Why, why does he want to counsel you? And a woman, uh, the girl said, well, he's like a father to me. He comes to my home and, and help my English. He, he said he wants to love everyone in the world. And he comes to my home. Immediately I know something wrong. I mean, why do you want to go to someone's home every week to help English while that person has a church? And I told up that pastor. The pastor said, I just, you know, I just helping people in the world, different people. But I said, there are so many people out there. Why don't you go and help them? And, but then he did not listen and the girl did not listen. And later I asked the girl, I said, did she hug you? She said, yes. Did she kiss you? Yes. I know this is really wrong. And, and uh, I, I told the girl, he really, he in, intends to have an intimate relationship with you. It's very dangerous. And then very shortly, the girl left the church. And she said, I want to go to his church. And uh, immediately the change came to her. On the Facebook, she's all made up with heavy made up. Totally different girl. Changed from a simple girl to a heavily made up girl. Apparently the pastor liked her to, be, to have makeup. And I'm wondering about the pastor. What does he want? Yeah. And does he want to serve God? Does he know that God sees what he does? Mm. Or does he think, I just get one girl, I just use whatever method I can get one girl, I can get one person from another church. First, he's stealing someone from another church. Mm. Second, he is, you know, I, I'm afraid he might have sex relationship with a girl already. I don't know. I, I could never find out. And I don't have to find out because I just helped the girl. I told the girl's mother too. I said, he's very dangerous because, you know, he's having intimate relationship with your daughter. And there could be, you know, it can go so wrong. And I know people who are very anointed and then they have sexual relationship with people or they uh, uh, touch women in places that they should not touch. So this is something we really have to watch. That any lust, so when you get online and see any sexy pictures, immediately turn it off. You continue to watch that, your life is unpleasing to God. When God sees your life, He detests it, detests it. He doesn't like your life. He doesn't want to enter you. He doesn't want to feel you. So we need to say, God will provide the best wife for me. I don't have to use my way, and I don't want to use any immoral way. I want to follow God only. So I would say be very careful, have someone accompany you, and examine your heart. Do I like her company? Do I like her to come to visit me? Do I think about her all the time? Even when you have no intimate contact, when you start thinking about her, it's already crossing the boundary. And when we counsel people too, when two persons always like to see each other, they already fall in love. That we have to realize that falling in love doesn't necessarily mean physical contact. It can be just thinking about a person a lot of time that's already crossing the boundary. And, it, and it's, uh, you know, that it's something that God doesn't like and it can destroy uh, ministers and it can also destroy Christians. Many Christians, they are attracted to women and then in this society it's very easy for people to be very intimate touching each other and then have sex and then later you know very it happened very often because men and women enter relationship very differently. Women enter relationship to get love, protection, long-term relationship. Men enter relationship, sadly speaking, for sex. Even holy men look for sex. It's a fact. So we have to realize that that 
is something that can destroy our life. So we want to be very careful in a church that when two person date, it's very easy for them to have sex. So it's something we have to teach in the church that, uh, that we don't start with romance. We have to seek God's guidance and we have to see marriage as something ordained by God, very important in our life, so we don't rush into it. We will seek God's guidance and have only communication and not intimate contact. Have communication to find out whether the person is the right person and to pray to God if this is the right person, to interact to see if the person is the right person. And I suggest that for anyone dating, there should be dating counseling because it's so easy for people to fall from God when they are dating, that they will continue to sin. And also, I know there are so-called Christians who would date one girl after another and have sex one after another, and they, they could be still going to church and worshiping. And at the same time, they have sex with a woman, and then they repent, and then they have sex with another woman. It happens, because sinful nature is very powerful. We have to realize because I know it's so powerful and because I treasure my, my life and I treasure my ministry, I don't want to lose that opportunity. So I'm very careful to not to let anything destroy my life and also when I see any woman, I'm, I'm very careful. And especially for me, you know, I, I have to be in charge of meetings. Definitely there will be many women waiting for me to pray for them and I pray for them with a clean heart, is, then it's pleasing to God. So it's something we have to work on to, to say that all this thing is just a one time seems to be fun, but it can be a long-term destruction. It, it can destroy your life totally. So I hope you remember this and say, God has something best for me already planned. I don't want to go into something like this. It will mess up my life. When a minister is messed up, I've seen minister probably committing, commit suicide. That I know one minister, and later I was told that that he was dead in the ocean, and most likely he did not go swimming and drown. Most likely he was he committed suicide. I've seen minister who lose the position of ministry. I've seen minister, I've known two ministers personally who had to go to jail for sexual offense. So I don't want anything like this to destroy my life. I want, I, I appreciate God so much, I say, Lord, please preserve my life, keep my life holy, that I can serve you longer and bless more people. God and people invest a lot in our life. Now you might say you're still young, and so, well, the investment is not very big yet. But let me tell you, because you can learn from minister. What I have learned in this few decades in my ministry, you can learn in a short time. Yeah. If you learn all this in a short time, and then you can apply it for the rest of your life, and you carry the anointing, starting, you know, at this point, then, and then have good teachings, your whole life will be totally different because you have the experience of many ministers in, in the past that can help you. So I, I hope that you see that your life is very precious, it has the investment of God and of people, ministers who minister to you and help you to build you up so that you come to this point. I hope all four of you can go into ministry in the future, that you go into continue ministry, that you don't stop somewhere or that you don't fall and lose your positions as a minister because of sin or even fall from salvation. That I hope all four of you will go into, you know, follow God's way and then because you can learn all this. I mean, material can be uh, seen online and then I have it in writing, you can read and you can learn to apply it and then uh, then your whole ministry can go very fast